And we are live, guys. Hey, it's uh, Wire Lady TV. It's Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, talking to you from Montreal. I'm just going to pull up the video on my computer so I can see your guys' comments. And if you're hopping on, just tell me where you're watching from. I'm going to have a look here. And every week we do live streams. My name's Heather Boyd, Heather Boyd Wire. And uh, yeah, so every week we do a live stream. And troubleshoot new ideas and stuff like that. So I actually am going to do something a little bit different today because we have the bracelet challenge coming up. So I'm going to show you some inspiration for the bracelet challenge. Hi Paula, you're the first one on. Awesome, Clarice is here. Yay, Manhattan. Awesome. I can't wait to go back to New York City. It's been too long. We were supposed to go this summer, but maybe next summer. Elizabeth is here. Hello, hello. And uh, yeah, so this is great guys. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, DIYing pretty soon. Some, uh, I'm gonna do some names, a few. I have a lot of requests for wire names. So I'm gonna do a few names. Hey Julie, how are you? And uh, yeah, hope you're well. I'm doing good, doing good. Nice day in Montreal, a little bit chilly, but sunny. Yeah, so bracelets coming back. Uh, so uh, first off, next week on September 1st, is the beginning of the 10 day wire bracelet making challenge. So if you guys are new to these challenges, I've done a few already. We did the earring challenge, we did the pendant challenge, we did the ring challenge. So this time it's bracelet challenge. And what I'm gonna do is every day for 10 days, I'm gonna post a tutorial for a bracelet, hopefully not too complicated. And then you guys can either join the Facebook group. So there's a Facebook event page called the 10 day wire uh, bracelet making challenge. Hi Pamular! And if you don't have Facebook, we have Discord, which is either an app on your phone or a um, website, discord.com. Hi Amber, how are you? And hi Wendy! And I will, I will, what I'll do is, and Amanda, awesome, everybody's hop, hopping on. Okay, and chacun de tu name, I can't, I don't know what that username is from Ecuador. Awesome, fantastic. So uh, you didn't miss anything. I'm just explaining, hi Sandy, I'm explaining the uh, a 10 day wire uh, bracelet making challenge. So if you don't have Facebook and can't join the Facebook group, you can join the Discord group. And what I'm just gonna ask of you guys is you don't double post. So you either choose to join the Facebook group or the Discord group. Uh, to share your work from the bracelet challenge. That's going to be much less overwhelming. Otherwise, we're going to have double posts everywhere. So what I'll do is in the description of this video, and I'm going to do an introduction video uh, to the challenge. I'll put all that information, all the links, everything. Hi, Peggy. How are you doing? So I thought what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to flip the screen and show you guys some bracelets I made many, many years ago. So for you, those of you that don't know, I've been making wire jewelry for 30 years. I started making um, wire jewelry when I was selling on the streets of Montreal in 1989. And so what happened was I was actually selling some very bizarre like hand painted buttons and a bunch of like really artsy stuff that wasn't selling very well. And then when I went, I, when I met my husband, um, Mark, he was making little wire bicycles and he introduced me to the wire and so what happened after that was um, I started doing all kinds of different wire and jewelry. But just before I met him, by chance, I started experimenting with wire. Hi, Annette, how are you? And so what, uh, what happened was I started experimenting with wire just before I met him. I was making all kinds of funky little like bracelets and stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys some of that stuff now. Some of these pieces are inspiration for the designs in the bracelet challenge. I'm trying to do some really different designs in the bracelet challenge because I know there's a lot available on the internet, like a lot of bracelet tutorials and stuff, but I'm gonna try to put my own spin on some different designs and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let me flip, no roses please. No roses, no steampunk. Yes, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's all good. We're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get by without some of that stuff that you guys don't like. So let me flip my screen around. I have a whole pie. It's gonna look like a bit of a jumbled mess. But then, Heather history, yeah, lots of history here, that's for sure. So here we go. So here is 
vintage stuff looks like a pile of mess but what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it to the side and then I'm gonna bring everything out one by one so you can see it so these are my old cards my so what's wrong with steampunk nothing's wrong with steampunk but Wendy has a love-hate relationship with with steampunk so that's why it's an inside joke so these are my old uh, cards display cards I used to call my company filament and now it's called Heather Boyd wire and so these were old cards that I used to display my stuff on and I think the best place to start would be the very beginning so when I started making um, I was making like hand painting buttons and stuff which I've shown you guys before I don't have any handy but this was a pair of earrings I made many many years like 30 years ago when I started selling on the street so because I had made I was making painted silk buttons and so these were this was leftover painted silk that I had from making the buttons and so I wound it around the these these were like little mini bangles and uh, they're older than you, ha ha ha. So, so these are like little mini bangles that I wrapped with silk and then wrapped them and then those became earrings. So that was one of my first pieces. Why did you change your company name? Uh, I changed the name because I wanted to have my own name in there and people found it very confusing, filament, because filament also means, uh, it also means like the little bits in a light bulb. So it was very confusing for people to know exactly what it meant. So that's why I changed the name of the company. So those were these earrings. And then that kind of evolved into wrapping uh, just a bangle with leather. So this, that's, that was my next evolution of the, of the, uh, the wire wrapping. Hi, Ginger. How are you doing? Oh, my computer went down and I can't see your comments. So let me just pull this up now. Okay, now I see what's going on. Perfect. Excellent. So... Oh, there's a little bit of delay in the comments on the on the computer. That's interesting. Okay, so this so then what I did was I wrapped this bangle with leather. And the interesting thing about leather is you can kind of sculpt it. In fact, I didn't do that here, but you can actually wet leather, soak it, sculpt it, and it will hold its shape. But what I did here was I just kind of sculpted it around and I did it uh, like that. And then another piece that I did was another bangle, and then I sculpted it and added... Uh, beads on there so this was sort of like the evolution of going towards wire and then this was one that I did adding beads to it so that, these are all bracelets that was interesting and then flash forward to a lot uh, a lot later I made one with little rubber from a bike a bicycle tire I do have a little playlist of bracelets that I've already done so those I'll, I'll link up below as well so these are, yeah, sculpting leather is really cool. A lot of people make little leather masks that they, they wet the leather and then they sculpt it to hold the shape. And then when it dries, it holds the form. So it's very, very interesting. So this is sort of like the first little collection. And then what I did, I also was experimenting. So that was just wrapping, you know, no, fi no fixings, no findings, no anything. And then what I did was I was experimenting with making a little clasp, okay? So this is very primitive uh, before I knew anything about making wire. And I just got a cheap piece of wire from the, the hardware store. And basically just, I probably just wound the leather around a wire and then created a clasp. So that was sort of like a very simple kind of thing. So there we go. That was just like a very simple class with a very cheap wire. So that was interesting. So then from there, I got some electrical wire. And here's some electrical wire. And then what I did from there was I, is this, I, I think I braided the wire. So I braided like the, uh, this electrical wire and then wound it with another uh, piece of of wire this is brass looks like brass it might also be alpaca silver i'm not quite sure i think it's brass yeah but this is probably from the hardware store because i didn't when i moved to montreal i didn't know any jewelry stores actually there were very there was one beading store but there were very few jewelry supply stores in montreal when i moved here and then i made a little class so that's not bad for someone that didn't have a lot of a wire experience so there's that one and then from there I kind of evolved and started like sculpting 
the wire. So this is this one's very a little more ornate. It's using pieces of the electrical wire with the with the um, regular wire, and then so just very free form. So we'll probably do a bracelet similar to this in the challenge. Um, I'll definitely um, you know that's going to be one of the days. I haven't decided on the exact project. But this is really interesting, and then you can just hook it in there. It's very organic. You can add beads to it. It's really, uh, it's very interesting. And then from there, I did more that was like adding beads to it. It's sort of like a sculptures, right? They're really kind of basically a sculpture. And then there's like a little hook and stuff too. So it's fun making making the bracelets with the wire because you can really just like use your imagination with it. Oh, and uh, then there was one more that I did. I had this piece of cork and I just basically painted the cork. And uh, yeah, the beads are cool, eh? So there's the cork and I basically just, I didn't have many materials to work with back then. I had this glow in the dark paint. No, well, it's fluorescent paint, I guess. So I painted this piece of cork and just poked, very easy to poke holes in. So you poked holes in the cork and then just formed the bracelet around that. So this one is really cool. I really like this one, it's super cool. And the cork is fun because it's solid enough, but yet you can poke holes in it. So that's really cool. And then another one that I did around the same time period was this charm bracelet. And, or it's like little coins type of things. So this one, I actually have a tutorial already on the channel. I think I did a live stream where I made one similar to this, but this is one of the original ones that I made with a little cat bead and, and little, you know, metal coins hanging down and stuff. And so it's cool because it jingles. It's kind of like a belly dancing skirt, which is really cool. So yeah, I've come a long way since then. Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. And then two others that I didn't show you that I forgot, that was before I went into, I got dove into the wire, were these leather, this is like a leather, or maybe, a, yeah, it's real leather. So this was one that I made where I took a piece of leather and I sewed these uh, pearls on there, on here. I'm pretty sure I wore this for years, that's why it's all crunched up, and then it just snapped, so you stick the snaps on. So this was one I definitely made that 1989 when I was selling on the on the street. So this is pretty cool. Leather leather face mask and belly dancing. Wonder where this is going. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting times, I'm telling you. Met a lot of really interesting people selling on the street too. It was good times. I loved it. So there's a little cuff bracelet and then this was another one that I made around the same time period. This would have been before I started with the wire. And basically it looks like I used beading thread to sew these little pieces on there. And then this thing too, this, you have the, the snaps as well. Not quite sure how that worked. Oh, it just bent over. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna snap it on. I used to do a lot of sewing. So I had a lot of like these snap findings and stuff like that. So that's really cool. So there we go. Hi, Angela, how are you? So there, and then we just sewed these little, I probably had very few beads, so I just had, uh, you know, just sewed on what I had. Reminds me of maple bar donut with sprinkles. Ooh, yum, that sounds really good. So these are old ones, and then um, another one that I made, like after I started using the wires, so I had this uh, aluminum wire that I started working with, and this is one, this one's interesting, I had, started it and I never finished it so I ended up finishing it last night and this is so what these are these are just little pieces little little squares and little triangles that I jump ring together this one's really cool so I found a bracelet like that on the beach with the word love oh nice beautiful yes yes we'll definitely be doing a bracelet with some words on it as well so definitely look out for this but this one i quite like yeah this one i really love this one's really uh not difficult so this i think i'm going to do one similar to this on the challenge but it's going to have options because it does take a long time to attach all the pieces together so some of the bracelets in the bracelet challenge are going to have options so you could do like a more advanced version or a not so advanced version but this one I love like it's kind of cool yeah you like I, th I knew you guys would like this one so funny enough like these middle pieces I, I did probably 25 almost 30 years ago these middle pieces and then it was short right so I had to add this is an add these pieces at the end are added and I actually used the artistic wire 
jig to make this. So this is doable, guys. We can definitely do this. Love having options. Absolutely, for sure. Laura says, cool. Thank you. And Mustafa is here. Hey, how are I didn't see you hop on, Mustafa. Nice to see you. So this was that. And then another funky one I did because I was doing a lot of little bicycle sculptures and stuff just because my husband was making those as well. So this one I made just for fun. So it's like a little bicycle type wheel. And then I added like these just little bead, like little simple bead chain uh, elements to it as well. So this one is super fun too. I love this one. And it's got like the little wheel on there. So great for bicycle fans. And it's just kind of funky, you know, I really like this. Diana says, hello from Chicago. I've been to Chicago. I went to Chicago with my daughter to go see the American Girl store and also the History Museum to see a show of a photo, black and white photographs from uh, Vivian Meyer. It was an amazing, amazing show. It was beautiful. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, this one's really funky. I like that one for sure. A couple other ones I did was, um, well, just a basic one. And I do have a tutorial for something simpler, uh, simple like that as well. So that was a recent one. Uh, here's a couple my friend Allison made me. She she did a lot. We did a lot of beading together, and this was one she made. She used to make a lot of hematite bracelets, and a lot of people love hematite bracelets because they're very they're supposed to be therapeutic. Um, whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But this has like a little magnet clasp, and then just like the hematite beads as well, magnetic uh, hematite. And the chip bracelet is great. She used to make hundreds, not hundreds, tons of these to give us to friends. So this is memory wire with the semi-precious chips. So yeah, she made a lot of these and gave them out as friends uh, to friends. Actually, uh, my friend Allison made a bunch of these, and she also used to make a lot of eyeglass holders, which were really nice too. And she would always, not to sell, just to give to friends. So so those are beautiful souvenirs from her. And Kathy says, hello, Heather and friends. Hi, Kathy. And then another one that I made was just this, this chunky one, chunky monkey. This actually was from a tutorial for a necklace. And I ended up turning it into a bracelet. So that was kind of fun. Just made with like, you can make it with head pins and stuff. But this one's super funky. I actually really like that one too. I don't know if you guys like that one. Let me know. Hematite's good for blood flow. I've heard that it's good. The, the magnetic hematite, because you can get magnetic and non-magnetic. Yeah, this is pretty huge, eh? It's good for weightlifting. Hey, I like that idea. <laughs> Chunky monkey, there we go. And then the other thing I thought I'd show you guys, which is really fun, was this was a Mandela that I think I bought this one. I don't remember, but I've definitely made these. And if the thing with this Mandela, it's super cool because you can... You can, if you make it with another extra little bit, it end, actually ends up being more like a, a kind of a, a ball, like you could bend it in a ball. I love these. It's almost like a fidget thing. And you can make this larger as a bracelet, which is really, really cool. And it's not that difficult to make, but these are super fun and they're very, you know, very um, beautiful to look at, but they're also really fun to play with. So, so guys, that's, all of, the, all of those are my inspiration for the bracelet challenge, which is coming up next Tuesday. So that's pretty exciting. And then what I want to do today is I want to do a name bracelet, but I had a thought to use some of this leather. So I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I have all this old leather from back in the day, and I'm going to see what I can do with it. So let's just see. Be hard to make despite you saying it's not. I don't think it would be hard to make that one. So, uh, but I'll, I'm going to let you guys know. I also have all these little bits of hemp fabric that I use to make um, all kinds of different like little flower pins and stuff. So I have the, a little collection. But this is all leather that I haven't really touched since like the the, the 90s. So I don't, I'm not quite sure if this is going to work. I had an idea of something to do with this. Uh, and we're going to see if it's going to work. And then I have all these lists of names that I haven't done yet that people have asked me to do. So look at all these names that I've been asked to do and, and these ones that I've already done. So we're going to see what we can do about that. Hemp is so strong. Yeah, hemp is a really cool fabric. So I'm going to uh, bring this over here and let me just see what I can do for... I don't know if this is gonna work, but I had a thought to do like a little bracelet. So if I get some leather and I'm gonna cut it in a strip and see what I can do about that. In fact, I probably should just 
um, dry it out first. I'm going to get a ruler and see. This might be one of those projects that I start and stop, which has definitely happened before, but we're going to see. And at least I'll get a couple of names done. So if you soak it, it gets really soft for the, for the hemp, eh? Okay, that's cool. So, uh, Wendy, <laughs> your comment got blocked. That's hilarious, but I'll, I'll just show it. Yes, I will be doing uh, names until my dying days, but it's all good. I enjoy them, and the more I do, the better I get, so that's good. So now let's just go ahead and draw a little line here. We're going to just draw on the back and cut it. I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to need, so why don't I start with this and see, and... Guess, and Neil's here. Hey, Neil, how are you? That's right. It's evening there. That's it. So, uh, yeah, everybody's getting a different time zone. Let me know in the comments what time it is at your place. We're, we're just after, like, one, we're at 1.30 now, Eastern time, Montreal time. And actually, there's been talk about uh, changing uh, the... Um, what's it called, the daylight savings time, to have more hours in the day. So I don't know if it's a rumor or if they're actually trying to like get that get that to, be, to go or not, but uh, I wouldn't mind to have more hours in my day. So there we go. So what I was thinking, I don't know if this is going to work, but I thought it might be interesting to like kind of do something like that where you can make a band. I think it's going to have to be a little bit longer. So if I go like this, let's see if it's going to work. And um, I wanted to try to make a leather band where you can add a name to it, but I'm not 100% it's a practical idea. Sometimes I have these ideas and they just go nowhere. So, so we're just going to see if it's going to work or not. Okay, so 1228 in the Midwest. Nice, having brunch. Awesome. Yeah, I just ate my lunch before I hopped on. I usually eat salad for lunch. And uh, it keeps me going for a while. But I put a lot of really cool stuff in my salad. I put kale and all kinds of like beets, raw beets, all kinds of interesting veggies. And then I put trail mix, uh, all kinds of things, depending on what I have at that time. I love salad. Okay, so let's just do this and see what's going to happen. Like what I was thinking is if we kind of brought it in like that, but that might be a little bit wide now I think that's going to be a little bit wide might be interesting as well so why don't I cut it a little bit smaller just to see and I'm thinking maybe I'll just get my hot glue gun going because that might be the fastest way to tack it in place and um, also to make it relatively solid so what's my computer at now I don't want to it to die so I'm gonna just plug in my glue gun quickly and then I'll replug in my computer there we go so I'll just plug that in quickly I have a octopus on my table with all my plugs so let's go ahead and just make a little line on this to cut it a little smaller okay so I'm just gonna cut this one a little bit smaller because it's a little bit big right now so maybe this much looks like it's going to be about three quarters of an inch and let me know in the comments if you guys ever work with leather and uh, what sort of things you've made with it because uh, I used to work more with it but I haven't in a long time but I think it's cool octopus yeah the octopus is is do you remember those ads from well we had them in the 70s where they tell you like not to plug in too many things into one plug because it would start to look like an octopus. That's uh, that's sort of what my plug looks like on my table here. Because I have too many, too many things plugged into it. Never worked with leather, Wendy. Okay, it's it's a lot of fun. I just use like scrap leather little bits. I don't even remember where I got these little bits, but or sometimes I'll take like old like jackets or stuff and just cut them up and upcycle them type of thing. So there we go. So we go like that and. Let's see if it's going to be a little bit better if I bring it in like that. That might be a little bit better. So as the glue heats up, actually, we should decide how much you're going to need. So if you want to, like, if you would bring it around like this type of thing, but it's going to have to be, like, a little bit smaller because I'll have to put a clasp on it. I have really tiny wrists, so we're going to go up like this 
and then just cut it. And if it's too small, it's fine. So we're just gonna get to, every time I touch a glue gun, I burn my fingers. That happens, yeah. I remember I used to teach uh, jewelry making. Uh, no, it was more than jewelry. I think it was like arts and crafts or something at the school. And there was this one girl and she she burned her hand with the glue gun, but she just, she did it on purpose because she wanted to know what it felt like. And I just, I was just like, really? <laughs> if kids do that, I was really surprised. So, oh, the other thing, guys, is I got two new pairs of pliers from Beadalon. They sent me two more pairs of pliers because the other ones I had, I didn't find them that um, as good as my red ones. So these are two new pairs. This is the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, Nina, you're, you're here and Almond are here. Awesome, fantastic. So these are, yeah, these are both from Beadalon and they look pretty good. This, these are the ergonomic ones and these are, these are just um, regular ones. I can link them up below. Uh, we're just, <clears throat> excuse me, rough throat. So these are the, my husband actually noticed that these ones are interesting because they have a really strong rivet in it. And it's good to have that because that means when you're using your pliers, these ends aren't going to like move back and forth, which is a really good, uh, a really good thing. They seem pretty solid. These ones look really good too, the ergonomic ones. And so we're going to try those today and see how they go. And, um, I learned yellow mustard is great for burns. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I usually just stick ice on it right away and, and that works pretty good too. So what I want to do here is I'm going to do a name to go on the leather cord and just to see if it's going to work because I'm not 100% it's gonna, sure it's going to work. So I could use brass or I could use silver or I could use gold. So what do you guys think would look best with this leather? Would it look best with brass, silver, or gold? So let me know in the comments which you think is a better choice and I'll choose what name I want to do to go on there. I'm just going to look at my little list. Da, 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 da. Oh, so many names. I'm undecided here. Maybe I'll just keep it simple. Okay, that could be a good one. So what do you think, brass or gold? Uh, definitely gold. We have gold and brass. Hmm, gold, gold. Yeah, let's use the gold. Okay, perfect. So we've got the gold, awesome. And then what I'll do is I'm just gonna do a name. I'll do a simple name. So I'm gonna cut maybe about a foot of wire and we'll do the name Sarah. I'll, do, I'll just do the name Sarah. I think that's simple. And let's just do it. Okay. Gold. So we got gold. Yes. So here we go. And we'll just start. I'm going to leave a little bit of extra at the beginning. And actually, I think my glue gun's gun, uh, done. So let me just, let me just get the glue gun quickly. Yeah, my glue gun's hot. So before I do the, before I do the word, I'm going to go ahead and get the glue gun here. Bring it over here. Now, if you have other types of glue, it's probably better. So Ashmita's here. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. So we're going to just like basically kind of tack it in place. So I'm just going to put a little bit here. Okay. It's basically so it won't like unravel. And I don't know if this is going to work well or not. It probably would work better with a different glue. But this is the idea. So we just want to hold it in place so it doesn't unravel. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this is the best glue. It might be better to use something like contact cement or something like that, but let's just put a bit of the hot glue and see how it's going to work. And uh, basically we're going to kind of like attach it together anyways with, with the wire. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the hot glue. I think I'm doing, I'm just doing it because it's a quick fix for the video, but normally I'm pretty sure there's other special glues you can get for for leathers, so um, maybe maybe even a fabric glue might work better. I'm not sure. If any of you work with leather and have other ideas, you know, definitely let me know. But I just want to tack it quickly. I'll, I'll often do that when I'm doing art projects. Is I'll just go for the hot glue because it's a quick fix. My glue gun is over 20 years old, and some of those older glue guns are so hot. Uh, at least now, like this is a dollar store one. They make low temperature glue guns, which are great. You know, especially working with kids. 
but some of the older, like we have an older glue gun too, and it's so hot, it's ridiculous. So there we go. So this is definitely not perfect, but hopefully it will hold in place just like that. And now I'm gonna unplug the glue gun and I'm gonna plug in my computer so it does not turn off while we're on the live stream. So there we go, so plug that in and we're good to go. Let me remove that. Perfect. I have four hot glue guns. Well, Mustafa, you do a lot of crafts, so I'm not surprised you have four hot glue guns. Your grandmother made jewelry. How interesting. What kind of jewelry did she make? That's really cool. I'd love to see pictures. So, guys, let's do Sarah here. So, I don't know if Sarah's actually watching the live stream, but she did request her name as she was pretty recently, so she's lucky she has an easy name because that's what I opted for today. And I didn't want any with too many like uh, letters that hang low or, or high, so it's just sort of like on one level. So there we go. So let's go ahead and start the S. We're going to go up here, and I don't want to make it too big because I want it to fit on here. So let's go ahead and bring this one and then bring it around and we'll do Sarah. So try to keep it small-ish. Sometimes that's a, that's a challenge is to keep the letters small and uh, it's definitely a bit of a challenge sometimes. And sometimes I find I start small and then they get bigger because that can happen too. I also tried, wanted to try quilling. Now I've done quilling uh, with paper uh, but it's very, it's very time consuming. I did it just for fun. I made some cards for my mom and stuff. And I do have a tutorial that's actually a quilled pendant, which is really cool. So basically I did some quilled paper and put it in a little frame and laminated it for a pendant. So that was really fun. I actually did that at the cottage. It was really last, maybe two years ago. Um, I love your crafts. Yeah, Almond does, uh, or Mustafa does amazing crafts for sure. The tutorial, I'll have to link it up, but if you, if you go to my channel, you can always search videos. So if you search, uh, I guess you would just search um, qu uh, quilling or quilled uh, pendant, you would find it on my channel. So I'm just trying to think of the best way I want to, I think I'm going to actually keep this out straight out like that. And then because the, the, key is going to be how to attach it to the leather cord. So I'm going to just go ahead and do the name and then we'll go from there. Perfect. And Pauline says, when you get your pliers, what kind of pliers do you get? So the pliers I have are very old. Um, actually, I was going to try the new ones, right? So let's try the beetle on ones. These are the ergonomic ones. But these red ones I have are my favorite, and you can't buy them anymore because I bought them in a hardware store 30 years ago, and that hardware, hardware store no longer exists. And we've kind of looked around the Internet for similar ones, and I've had trouble finding them. So these aren't too bad. I find the points aren't as even as on my red ones. You see the red ones have, like, really nice fine very fine points and these ones aren't as fine and they're not quite as even so I mean so far it's not too bad but for like really small bends it's not going to be as uh, as pre precise so let's just go ahead and do the R and it's it's always really hard using new pliers that you're not used to that's kind of normal like it's really uh, it's a little difficult. So those are the ergonomic ones. And let me try the other ones. And I've ordered a bunch of other round pliers to test for you guys. So hopefully they're going to be coming. These actually seem to have a nicer, finer point. These are the beetle on ones. I'll check the package after to see uh, which one, what they are actually called. But these seem pretty good. They're comfortable. They're not expensive. Actually, there's a good size. The ergonomic ones were a little small. These seem to be a good size. And the points seem quite good. And they, I'm, I think I'm enjoying these ones a little bit better. Yeah, I think I like these ones a little bit better. And then, but the trouble with these is the end is quite small. So you need the larger pliers to do the round form. So let me see how large. They're not too bad, but they're not that large either for the ergonomic ones. Let's just go around and see if it's big enough to do the A. It's pretty good. 
uh, just about the right size, like just barely the right size. So they would work. They would work in a pinch to get that round form. But normally what I would do is I would use my black ones because my black ones are do have a bigger circle on them. So if we go around like this just to check... Yeah, that's pretty good. I think the size of those is pretty good. So sometimes you have to use a combination of pliers if there's one that has a fine tip and one that's more uh, uh, like larger. Sometimes you have to use a combination of pliers. Now, this is so awkward because I'm not used to these pliers, but generally what I would do is just pull this to the front. Okay, so we'll pull this to the front. There we go. And then there's Sarah like that. So now what we want to do is Dollar Tree sells silicone thimbles to, oh, the craft corner to use with hot glue guns. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. I just posted a post in the Discord group of your recent quilling project. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll go check that after. I don't think I'm going to have time to show pictures on the live stream today. But uh, if you guys want, on the next Let's Get Wired episode is going to be on um, Sunday. So Sunday at noon, I'm going to do a quick little, well, not that quick. It's going to be a live stream and it's going to be, we're going to work on trees. So if anybody has ever wanted to do a tree sculpture, we're going to make not huge trees, but medium sized trees. So what you can do is collect up some stones and wire, like anywhere between 24 and 20 gauge wire would be great. And so uh, so we're going to do that on Sunday at noon, Eastern time. So uh, Wendy said, I haven't found round, large round pliers. Yeah, it's hard to get large round pliers, but I'm definitely going to, you know, keep testing the pliers and find some that are going to work for you guys. Yeah, so that'll be Sunday. It was supposed to be Saturday, but it's good to be, be in town again on Saturday. And yes, yeah, so trees, trees are going to be fun. And uh, I'm in the midst of learning how to do wire lettering. Yes. So yeah, I have a whole playlist of wire letters and words. So you could definitely check out the playlist. And um, it's just practice. Eh? It just takes practice. So there's Sarah. So now the key is going to be how do we attach it to the leather cord? So what I'm thinking we should do is because we want to just distance it a little bit from the name so what if we just went up like that uh how far let me just see this is goes right to there yet yeah. so let's go up and then down to the back and this one we're going to go down and then up here so this is like i said guys this is a total experiment haven't done this before with the names so we're going to see how it goes so the idea would be to put the leather here okay we'll just put the leather in there you might even want to reinforce the leather to make it like stiffer type of thing you could always wrap it around something like put several pieces or I don't know what else even put plexiglass or something in there there might be a way to reinforce it so if you want to center that the best you can I'm not sure this is the best way to attach it but I'm going to do it like this like just because it's a first one I'm not going to worry too much about it and we're just going to stick it on here and then wrap this around so I think Probably I should have made this cord a little a little thicker, but I think for now it's going to be okay. So we're going to just wrap that around a few times, okay, and then that one to the back. So there's one here, and then this one too. So we could just take this and wrap it around. The You see the leather is very, like, kind of flexible and pliable, so we're just going to do our best so it doesn't get crunched up. And bring this to the back so already that's kind of interesting I kind of like it and yeah like I said this is quite soft so I think you could even put wire inside actually probably would be a good idea to put some wire inside and um, this you'd want to use a better glue you could even wind this all the way back if you wanted to but because I cut these ends short probably the best thing to do would be just to kind of clip the end so we'll just clip the ends here. And I finished my letters last week. Nice. Oh, cool. I'll share in the Facebook group. Fantastic. 
Okay. And thank you for the round. Okay, Mustafa, my pleasure. I'm glad that those pliers are working for you. That's fantastic. So we're going to bring this one around. And basically, you just want to kind of bend that end in just to make a finishing, just to make a little finishing on it. So it's not like kind of sticking out type of thing. And then we're going to clip that and then bring this one in here. So we're going to bring this one in here, bring it in, and then you can kind of like push it in a little bit. You could even use your flat pliers to stick it in a little bit. So that, you know, is a way to attach the name to a leather band. But like I said, I might next time put some wire or something inside the band so it's going to hold its shape a little better. And then what you need to do is to do some kind of clasp. So if you do have a clasp that will like kind of hold it in place, it would be good. Otherwise, yeah, it would be nice if you had one of those kinds that like clamped in place and then, you know, you those, I don't know what they're called, like little end clamps or something that would be good. Otherwise, we're going to just have to make shift something with the wire. So we'll just go ahead and get a piece of wire here. And what I would do is maybe do like a little bit of a thing. I use bale making pliers in substitution for large round nose pliers. That's a good idea. Yep, that's actually a really good idea if you need a round, a large round form. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'll just take this and do a loop here. Okay, yeah, this one's not too bad. I mean, it's pretty long at the bottom. And then maybe what we could do is like kind of stick that in here a little bit. But then I think I'm just going to have to bunch this together because I'm not quite sure how else I'm going to do this. Otherwise, it's not going to really hold in place. And then we're going to want to wind it around. So this might or might not. I think it's going to be a little ugly. But we're going to see how it's going to work. So we're going to bring this around and then just kind of like wind these around. I'll try the other way, the other end maybe a little differently. And then just wind it around. So... Yeah, I think if I had like a little spring end or something, it would be better. Like I'm finding this a little thick right now, so I'm not quite sure. And then this might come out a little bit. But I think for the sake of just, you know, trying this with the tutorial or with the um, live stream, we'll just we'll just do what we can just so it doesn't like fall out of place. And then this you can actually pinch in so it holds in place. Even if it pierces the leather a little bit, it's probably all right. But you could also add a little dab of crazy glue in there, but if you pinch that in, it should be okay. This got stuck out a little bit too much. This is I'm not loving this, but you could push it in a little bit too if you want. It's got a little bit distorted. So that's, I mean, it's not too bad. It's not the best. Uh, you could maybe make it more kind of flat there. I'm wondering if there's a way to make it a little bit more flat. So I'm going to get the other end yeah it's going to be hard to like kind of get it so it sits flat and then you can you can either do a hook or you can just do another loop and add a hook so if you were to do a hook we can just go like this and hit it with a hammer you could definitely hit it with a hammer that's a great idea so we're just going to bend this down here okay and bend this one say around here a little bit and then for the hooks, basically, I would just, why don't I attach it first? I think this one ended up being a little bit uh, long. So if we just stick this one in here, and then we can form the hook. Is that one going in there? Yeah, see, I put too much hot glue in there, so it might be a little tricky. That's all right. We'll just stick it in there. And then I'll form the hook after. But yeah, see, this is a little wide now, so I'm thinking it is actually better if we just, like, bend it together a little bit and um, yeah I didn't think that part out so much but it's not too bad but there's all kinds of other findings you can use to um, instead of using the wire like if you have one of those kind of end pieces that goes on the on the end of leather and stuff that would be great you know I don't, I don't know what they're called I have some but they're too wide they wouldn't really work so well for this but you can get them that are uh, sort of a smaller width which would be good so if we do that and then we're just going to take this end and bend it like kind of bend it a bit on an angle and then pinch it in and then like Wendy said you can get a hammer and just bash it a little bit so 
these are very primitive. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but, and then to do the hook, cause you want the hook to go that way. So we're gonna just take this, go like that, and then bend this around here. Okay, so we're just gonna go around like that. And then, so there you have the name Sira, and then you can just bring this, it ends up being way too small. I should have cut, cut it longer, but just for the sake of showing you guys, and like I said, you can add, like, make a loop there and then add a different piece for that. So that's not too bad, just like that. So that's pretty good. Uh, ribbon ends, yes. Is that what is that what they're called? Uh, ribbon ends, those little pinchy things? Thanks, Ruth. That's I, I forgot about that. A pygmy brace. <laughs> it's even too small for me. Let's see if I can get it on my skinny little wrist. Let's see. We'll bring it around here and... No, I think it's even, it's almost, look guys, I can almost get it on there. So it's pretty good. I just wouldn't be able to latch it, but it actually goes around my wrist, which is, which is pretty cool. So that's it. So take tire wire near the S and curve it out for the design at the end. Take tire wire. I'm not sure, Laura, what you mean by that. Near the S and curve it out for the design. Hmm. Gosh, I'm tiny. Yes. Yes. Very. And Rain, how are you? I like that idea. Cool for someone. Yes, exactly. So this is a great starting point for a leather bracelet with the word on it. I'm definitely going to work on this a little bit more and possibly trying it with other findings and stuff. But uh, so you guys are on the ground floor of this design. That's super fun. And we are going to do a name bracelet in the challenge. It won't necessarily be with leather because not everybody is working with leather, but I'm going to do another kind of name bracelet in the challenge. And I've actually done one. Uh, I sent it to Mustafa. His, his, I did his name on a bracelet. So that was really cool. I, uh, I sent that uh, a little while back. So that was, that was awesome. And uh, yeah, so let me, s how about a snap? Yeah, I think that's a better idea, the snap. Uh, which would be more like these other bracelets that I made. These are ones that I was showing earlier that actually had snaps. So I think I think a snap would be super cool for that, as long as you had the materials to be able to you know install the snaps, like the little rivet things. I think that I think that's a really good idea to do a snap when it's wide like that. So that's fun. So I am going to flip the screen, add a chain. Yes, you could definitely add a chain and a clasp. That would definitely be a good solution to that. And, whoa, my cupboard door is open. There we go, perfect. So let me get back here. So guys, yeah, so we only made one thing, but that's, uh, that's, Show a pic of it in Discord. Yes. Oh, of the of the thing. Yeah, definitely. I can let me hop over to Discord now and see if anybody Mustafa, you said you posted your quilling. We have about five more minutes left. So let me have a look and see on Discord. So if you guys aren't already a member of Discord, let me try to find the link and then if you're not already a member, you could join there. And like I said, for the earring challenge, you can choose to either share your, uh, I mean, your the bracelet challenge, you can either choose to share pictures of your bracelets on in the Facebook event page or on Discord, Discord but um, not both, okay guys? Because that's gonna, that's gonna be really overwhelming. So if you wanna choose one of the two platforms to share your bracelets in the bracelet challenge, that would be amazing. And um, so whichever whichever platform you prefer. So here, I'm gonna get the link to the Discord group if you're not already a member. So let me just get that. And bracelet challenge starting September 2nd. And mainly what you're going to need for the bracelet challenge is you could have a variety of beads. Uh, most of the wire we're going to be using is about 20 18 gauge wire. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, probably this weekend, um, hopefully sooner than later, I'll put a list of the materials that you're going to need. But I'm going to try to use materials that most people have. So if you have 20 gauge wire, 18 gauge wire, probably 24 gauge wire, uh, that's a good bet and a variety of beads in different sizes. Uh, would be fantastic. So those, yeah, those are the basic sizes. So let me go to Discord uh, da, 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 and post live stream. So if ever you have some 
something to share that's related to the live streams um, that we're talking about today you can share it in the post live stream section it's like hashtag post dash live streams so here is Mustafa's quilling so oh it's, it's flipping Mustafa because that's my uh, here I'll do it sideways so there we go so there is Mustafa's quilling and you can get a better look of it if you join the discord group and look in the post live stream so quilling is a very beautiful art form made with paper and I love this is this a card Mustafa is that a greeting card uh, it's really really gorgeous I love it yeah you did a wonderful wonderful job and then what I'm going to do is I can show you guys the the um, video that I have for the quilling and uh, and then you can see what I mean by you can you can use it for you can use it for pendants and stuff but you have to like have some metal findings and uh, probably some lacquer or something for the I think when I did it I did it at the cottage and all I had was white glue but you can definitely I don't want to click it on it because you're not going to be able to see the video but there's there's the thumbnail for the quilled uh, pendant that I did. So there's all kinds of things you could do. I'll link that up in the in the uh, description below. It's for a photo frame. Wow, fantastic. You found the quilling video. Awesome. Okay, Wendy, that's great. You could always put a link here in the chat. If not, I'll put it in the replay, um, uh, in the description of the replay of the video for sure. So guys, yeah, so look out for Sunday at noon. We're gonna do the Let's Get Wired uh, uh, live stream and so basically what let, let's get wired is is you guys can make stuff with me at the same time and then share it in the discord group in the uh, let's get wired section and I'll show pictures of your work in progress as I'm working on mine on the on the live stream so this Sunday at uh, 12 Eastern time we're gonna be doing little trees so you can have Collect some little stones from outside, like just little rocks to put your trees on. We're not going to make huge trees. It's going to take too long. So yeah, 12 noon Eastern time. And so yeah, little rocks, stones type of things. And then also a 20 gauge wire is probably good. 18 is a little thick. It's going to make a way too big tree. You could even get away with 22. If you want to make a little tree, you could use 24 gauge. So whatever you got, little tree, 24, 22, or 20 gauge wires. So whatever you want to use is fine. There's not really a template for this one. We're going to be free forming. So you can make rocks out of Sculpey if you can't find any rocks. It's fine, and if you don't have a rock, we can always do like a little wire base for it. So no, don't worry too much about that. So, so that'll be fun. So guys, I'm gonna head off. I'm gonna see you guys. Uh, I'll post a regular video on Saturday. This Saturday's video is a letter keychain uh, tutorial. So I'm gonna upload that as soon as this one's processed. And Wendy find a rock in the parking lot. Yeah, so uh, my favorite use for 24 gauge wire is trees. Awesome, yeah. And it's fun making them with the thin wire because you could do lots of detail and you can make them really tiny as well. So it's gonna be super fun. And then uh, Tuesday is the bracelet challenge. So I will write in the Facebook event page the materials you're gonna need. And in the Discord group, I'm gonna create a Discord section for the bracelet challenge. And then, uh, so look out for that. I'll be posting videos every day at 10 a.m. Eastern time for the challenge. So that's gonna be exciting. And then if you don't already know for the challenge, if you make all 10 bracelets in the challenge, you're gonna be eligible to win a prize. And last time Wendy won a wire and beading kit, which was super cool. That was awesome. And uh, I'm sure Wendy, you're still using all those supplies for your beautiful uh, creations. So that's really cool. So guys, I'm going to say goodbye for now. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, and we will see you. Uh, we'll see you soon and see you live on Sunday. Okay, bye.